Okay, this is going to provide a uh, brief overview of the ZO project, which is uh, a type system for Project Haystack data. ZO stands for Extensible Explicitly Typed Objects. Um, this presentation is going to sort of assume you have some prior knowledge of previous work and presentations that were given, such as uh, um, protos and pog file at Project Haystack. Um, this is the current evolution of that work. And this uh, can be used sort of as a jumping off point for the rest of the videos to start playing with the initial release of Zeto. So, uh, Zeto is basically a type system for Project Haystack data. Uh, it's been an ongoing project funded by the DOE. Um, sometimes we call it a benefit project, or you've heard it called protos or pog files. Um, this is sort of the latest incarnation of that work. And the idea is to build types um, in a simple plain text format we call Zeto, and then those types can be used to both build haystack models of the built environment as well as validate those models. So we're basically trying to bring uniformity, uniformity and conformity um, to haystack data using this type system. Um, and one of the key features of this type system is that you can package these types up into reusable libraries so that they can be easily shared. And the plan later this year is that there will be sort of a crowdsourced repository to make this super easy to pull in these libraries uh, to validate um, your specific models and uh, whatever your capture requirements for specific buildings might have. So uh, the key thing here that we're going to look at in the rest of the videos is the command line tool for, for working with Haystack data and Zeto types. Um, and uh, this, this command line tool is basically an axon shell. We'll talk a little bit about that and how we arrived there in the last slide. So just a quick overview of the type system. Um, basically, sys is the library that contains the core types. Object is the top type, so everything derives from object. Um, and the bottom type is none, sort of that we use for, or you might use null in programming languages. And then everything else is, is one of two types, uh, a derivative of the scalar type or a derivative of the sequence type. So all atomic values are scalars. This is your strings, your numbers, your URIs, your dates, your date times, etc. And then sequences are your collection types, dictionaries, lists, grids. Uh, there's a couple special types, uh, the maybe type, which is an optional type. Um, and nor is a mechanism to um, create compound types from existing types, and then the query type we're going to look at in the uh, in the videos. So you're going to hear this uh, talked about later is this idea of nominally versus structurally typed. Um, scalars are nominally typed, which means um, I'm only a, for example, a date if I explicitly say I'm a date. Um, whereas when we're actually validating haystack data, we're going to use a structural type system. Um, that we call fitting a type to particular uh, dictionaries. So we're going to look a lot more of that in the in the later videos, but just sort of introduce the concept here. So this is a very quick overview of the syntax for Zeto. Um, you can see here what the string and the date um, declarations look like. They basically it's type name colon um, base type. Um, in this case, uh, you can add for your scalars. You can add a regex pattern. I'm not showing it here for um, brevity purposes, but you know, if you actually look at the source code, there's a there's a regex for date and time and date time, etc. Um, then we can also see a very simple example, and we'll look at this in the additional videos of creating a structured dictionaries. So you can see this dictionary here. I've created a new type called person, it's driving from dictionary, and then between the curly braces is. Uh, the tags, the fields, the slots that are required on that dictionary. So in this case, I've got a required marker tag called person. I've got a required tag called display, which must be of type string. And I've got a optional B day of type date. And that's what the little question mark there um, is a maybe type. That means that type is optional. But if it's there, it's got to be of type date. And then lastly, at the bottom two lines here, we're showing the and and the or type. Um, the and is used to glue multiple types together as sort of, a, um, sort of a multiple inheritance mechanism, and the or is basically used um, as an either-or situation. Um, or is not super supported right now in the, this initial implementation that we have available from February. So one thing I do just want to talk about a little bit, if you go and you look at the source code, if you want to create your own libraries, you do need to have a uh, 
you basically just create a directory and you create this lib.zo file in there. Um, and the most important thing here is you're going to give it a documentation summary, a version string, and then a list of your dependencies. Every library must depend on sys. You'll probably also depend on ph and maybe ph points, depending on how you want to, uh, if you want to use the points library that we've started for you. Um, and of course, you can de declare whatever other dependencies you may want in here. So these dependencies are how we resolve relative type names to their fully qualified type names. So you'll hear me talk about um, Q names or qualified names, that sort of the full type name that's unambiguous, whereas in your source code, you're going to use relative names, just like you would in most programming languages with some sort of using or import statement. We're going to look at this in detail in some of the videos, but this is a very simple uh, equipment template, what a, an equipment type might look like. Um, you can see here, I've got it, given it a type name. I'm saying this, this particular template, which is a VFD fan, requires the VFD tag, the fan tag, and the equipment tag. And then um, I'm requiring two specific point types. I'm requiring a fan run command and a fan speed command, which is, uh, these are not, those are not shown but those would be um, somewhere else in your library. So we're going to look at this in detail later, but this is just to give you a quick overview of what a particular equipment template might look like. So lastly, we need a way to uh, run all of this and evaluate it. So um, through this process, we've tried different approaches for a command line tool. We think the command line is really what's required here so that we're not tied to any specific programming languages. Um, or runtimes, I should say, in terms of, you know, do, do you need um, to build your program around this technology in Java or C Sharp or Python or whatever it is. A command line tool lets us basically call out to the shell um, to evaluate data and validate it. And um, one of the things that's really key there is you need to pipe these sort of data, data transformations together. So um, the current version is using our open source programming language Axon. So this is a very simple functional language. Um, it's part of the Haxel open source project. Um, and it's basically designed from scratch from manipulating Haystack. So you don't really need to know Axon. Uh, what you need to know is a few functions that will validate data in specific ways for data transformations that we'll look at in the videos. But there is a very quick tutorial video also um, just to get you started on what it looks like to call those functions from the shell. So we're going to do all our data wrangling as a series of axon functions. Um, the most important one is we're going to check specific data against types. Um, and those two functions are fits and lint fits. So fits is going to basically take a piece of data, typically a dictionary, and say, do you fit this particular type template? Um, and that's going to be true or false. If you want to know why it doesn't fit, you're going to use lint fits. Um, and then we have this other function, lint find all fits, which is, uh, this is something that you commonly want to do. You've got a whole library of types or templates or whatever you want to call them. And you want to go through your database and find all of the different types that fit your equipment and your spaces and your points, etc. So the other thing, of course, Axon has is a, a huge library of importing and exporting data in a whole variety of formats, comma separated values, JSON, Zinc, etc. Um, so you're going to be able to use those in terms of um, however you want to do your data validation. So the idea here is you're going to build your function library um, as a series of Zeto files, and then you're going to pull in data sets using JSON or Zinc or whatever it may be, validate them, and then output that data in however you want to consume it, which may be Zinc or JSON or CSV themselves. So that's uh, basically what we're going to be showing here in this series of videos and uh, that's all.